H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys, how we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kinfosys.com. That will execute the that will execute your file. So these are the steps which are involved right from uh, C sharp language to the native code which your system understands. So let me let me repeat again. C sharp code is converted to MSIL code or CIL code using C sharp compiler, and your common language runtime or CLR will convert this MSIL code to native code using just in time compiler and uh, that is the reason why they call it as just in time compiler so CLR will have uh, if you if you take this CLR has lot of uh, uh, advantages one of that is JIT compiler so let me put here even it will take care of CLR CLR stands for common language runtime so let me put it here common spelling correct common language runtime okay so so CLR will uh, convert your MSIL code to your native code using what using just in time compiler okay there are some other other things about uh, CLR also CLR will take care of take care of garbage collection and CLR will take care of both security security and security and etc okay so garbage collection is nothing but um, whenever you declare a variable and you're not going to use it for example I declared variables like this and again I am writing here say for example I am writing console dot write line I am writing here um, hello world or I am writing some code below this so your CLR will understand that after this line after this line um, your CLR will understand that you are not going you are not using a variables a and, a and b anymore so whenever the code is getting compiled after this line your CLR will will delete yeah, the delete the unused variables because you have to free the memory otherwise your system will hang like uh, uh, if all the memory uh, variables or whatever components are there in the memory so common language runtime will actually uh, delete even delete the unused variables okay now so I'll, I'll quickly summarize and one of you have to explain me this okay so C sharp code or VB code or any other code written in .NET framework languages will be converted to MSIL code or CIL code using the respective compiler uh, say for example C sharp compiler which is CSC.exe or VB compiler which is VBC.exe whatever the compiler will convert to MSIL or CIL code and that is the exe file which you are seeing uh, in the bin debug folder now the moment you double click on the exe file your CLR will come to the picture and CLR using just in time compiler will convert that exe to the native code and then will execute your file okay so so anyone wants to explain this quickly anyone wants to tell the same thing uh, I got a question here will CLR work with only C sharp no CLR is actually common language runtime see here uh, whenever after you compile the code after you compile the code whenever you see the exe you cannot tell uh, see for example if I give you this exe file do you do you see anything that uh, can you tell that this is developed in C sharp we cannot say that this is an exe so once you compile once you compile your program there is no difference between C sharp or VB or .NET any other language that's the reason why I mentioned here only as one box instead of writing like this three boxes so I just mentioned as one box because once you compile your code 
you you will not know using which code which uh, language you developed it even if someone sees this exe they can never say that this is developed in c sharp okay so so i repeat again whenever you compile your c sharp code using c sharp compiler that will be converted to msl code that's the reason why they call it as common intermediate language common intermediate language is common irrespective of which language you are developing your code okay so your cil code will be converted to your native code using what if someone asks you uh who is converting your cil code into native code so you have to tell clr using jit compiler so you have to tell the word clr clr using jit compiler uh will convert cil code to native code okay and if someone asks you can you tell some um what is the use of clr you can tell like uh, uh it'll it'll even take care of garbage collection or implementing security or the main feature is using just in time compiler it will convert your cil code to native code okay now even you can see the you even you can see the code of uh, cil code how it looks like so let me see whether that works or not so let me go to my computer c colon where where do you see dot net framework in the first class we discussed where we can see dot net framework so c colon uh, c colon windows c colon windows microsoft dot net framework so inside this version 4.0 okay so there will be there should be a something file called il uh just a minute not sure if it is coming with visual studio 2010 we used to have that but visual studio 2013 i don't think we have so let me the file name is ildasm start what happened so ildasm is the file name let me check whether we have it in so ildasm is intermediate language disassembler so the use of this intermediate language disassembler is you can see the code of this exe see whatever i am seeing here uh, this code add numbers code i can see that code so using intermediate language disassembler so normally that comes with uh, here visual studio 2010 12 let me check whether we have we have that visual studio okay i have it so what you need to do is open you can open your command prompt visual studio command prompt so here when you go to all programs visual studio 2012 and visual studio tools so there you are there you can see the developer command prompt for visual studio in this what you need to do is il uh, dasm so il dasm stands for intermediate language disassembler intermediate language disassembler so when you type il dasm press enter it will open a window so what you can do is you can actually uh, go to this folder apps folder and copy this and then file open and uh, you can actually paste it and then open this exe see now i can see the code here so i can see uh, the msl code so what is that i have here i have a main method and what is there in my main method see here you are not seeing anything like uh, uh, c sharp so here it is it is everything enter first number so these are all something like your assembly language code when you if you are electronics or if you are a computer science guys or uh, in your college days you might have studied uh, assembly language programming direct addressing mode register addressing mode jmp jump command or mov command anyone anyone heard this jmp mov uh something like this maybe it's uh 5 10 years back you cannot recollect so this is your
this is your intermediate language I mean uh, common intermediate language code so your C-sharp code is converted to the CIL code see here NOP load string LDSTR is uh, intermediate language load string load string enter first number and uh, like this we have uh, you don't need to understand this because this is intermediate language so you don't need to worry about it but keep in mind if you want to see uh, the code of intermediate language or common intermediate language what is the tool you have to use what is the tool you have to use if you want to see the code I'm using a tool now what is this using what I open the code ILDASM so just make a note of it it is intermediate language disassembler okay so now uh, let me show you one simple and quick difference between so why they are calling us uh, so now let me open another uh, Visual Studio console application so now file file new project and I'm going to create a Visual C Sharp console application and I'm not going to write anything here just I'm going to write console dot write line hello world okay let me rebuild this the moment you rebuild it it will create a uh, exe file I just rebuild it and right click on this open containing folder and bin debug I can see the CXE file okay so let me copy this path and Windows R notepad C sharp exe file is present in this path okay so let me create a VB VB code so I'm going to create Visual Studio 2013 and then I'm going to create file file new project and I'm going to create VB we have never done this let me open VB console application anyway nowadays uh, VB projects came down uh, drastically one after introduction of C sharp so VB will look like this module sub main su and sub like this so you'll not see flower brackets here so same code console dot right line hello world so now so let me rebuild it this is the first time I'm writing a VB code let me rebuild this so character not valid so you should not put semicolon here so let me rebuild this now so now I'm I'm able to see this uh, come succeeded so now right right click on this open containing folder go to bin debug you will see an exe file so let me copy the path and let me go to uh, let me go to that notepad and then open this and then VB VB exe file so I have here VB and I have here uh, C sharp so let's try to open this using ILDASM tool and try to compare whether we have any difference there so now how do I open ILDASM tool I need to open go to Visual Studio 2013 I need to open that um, developer tools so Visual Studio tools and then I need to open developer command prompt so double click on this now ILDASM another ILDASM let me open so now I have two instances of ILDASM so now what I need I'll just open and compare whether there is any difference between VB code and C sharp code first let me open C sharp code so file open give the path here and this is C sharp code so now let me open main method in C sharp so I have this okay so now let me open um, VB code and then see whether any difference we have there so let me copy this so file open so you will not have any difference between uh, VB or C sharp code or even any other technology so console application and then where is main method you have main method here so let me put this here and uh, let's compare now so this is C sharp and this is VP so what is the difference you see here so let's try to understand uh, what is the difference we are seeing here so uh, NOP LDSDR call NOP RET and end of main method so we don't see any difference exactly same 
ms curlib system dot console write line string so anywhere it is mentioned that it is developed in c sharp nowhere it is developed it is mentioned in uh, that is developed in c sharp so you can only see that cal managed code cal stands for common intermediate language so this is common intermediate language so i repeat again irrespective of the language which you are developing your cal code is same and using cal code it is di very difficult to know in which which language you have developed your code okay so now let me close it so this is about uh, more about introduction to uh, .NET Framework, CLR, CTS. I'm leaving to you. It is common type system. Uh, we already discussed that, but not, uh, but not as a separate CTS. So, what is the alias name for integer? All of you, what is the alias name for integer? Int thirty two. And what is that? So, can I can I use it uh, for example? that is what we call it as common type system for example in in here I can declare int a okay now if I go to this is C sharp project now let me go to VB project so here I cannot declare int a so I don't have uh, I don't have int small int here in VB we have capital int so if I declare int a it will throw me error like this if I put here I don't have India let me compile this because different languages will have different data types so uh, where is it you do have integer okay now if so we don't have integer so if but what I can do here is I can declare like this in 32 and yeah I can declare so I can declare the same thing so if I copy in 32 a and uh, in 32 let me put here like this you need to declare so I, I don't remember how we need to declare uh, in VB so let's okay dim a as in 32 okay so like this you can give so the same data type you can also use in you can also use in VB C sharp also see here even I can declare instead of int a I can declare as int 32 or int 16 okay so so these are something like we can tell like uh, common type system but there is slight difference but uh, let's not worry about that but are you clear with CLR MSIL JIT uh, concepts okay so just do some research on CTS and uh, see whether there is any difference between what I have told on common type system. CTS is common type system. Okay. So now this is about uh, introduction to .NET Framework. We have already discussed in the beginning classes and we quickly refreshed on uh, on these topics now. Okay. So now we all uh, we also discussed on number system and memory units. Uh, you are all very good in that. And then we discussed on uh, compiling or executing C sharp program without Visual Studio. We saw that using CSC space uh, file name dot CS. And then we discussed on data types and operators, uh, control structures, types of variables, value types and uh, reference types. So we also saw the difference between value types and reference types. So if I want to summarize that, uh, in value types, variable holds the actual value. In reference types, the variable actually holds the address location and the value types are stored in stack reference types are stored in heap examples for value types are integer float double decimal and examples for reference types are class or string is a reference type okay and performance wise getting a value from uh, reading a value from value type is faster when compared to reading a value from reference type because uh, when you want to read the value from reference type you have to do a uh, double reference so first you should get the address and then you should get the value from that address okay now we learned about functions functions are for reusable uh, code like if you want to find factorial of a number or if you want to find add two numbers or anything which can be reused you normally put that in into a function so just to uh, remove the redundancy and then we learned about arrays arrays are collection of similar data types while declaring the array you have to mention the size of the array array index starts from zero and we learned about collections uh, and we also learned about uh, generics and we also learned about lambda expressions uh, lambda expressions so now we'll quickly see uh, the usage of lambda expressions and link queue 
okay uh, and then we learned about exception handling where we write try catch blocks uh, wherever you s you foresee that there might be chances of any errors you write a, uh, a any exceptions uh, there you write a try catch block and in the catch block you will write the logic for uh, anything uh, you want to display when you get any exception we also saw that a single try can have multiple catch blocks we saw some uh, uh, some exceptions like uh, index out of range exception divide by zero exception so all those catch blocks you can write but uh, catch general exception exception ex should be at the end so which is called super exception super exception class okay and we also saw that if uh, irrespective of the exception if you want to execute the statements you have to use finally block okay so now we will see uh, what is the use of lambda expression we already discussed uh, a couple of examples on lambda expressions now we'll try to understand what is link queue and uh, and lambda expressions together okay so is it clear now so far all of you yeah so is it bit faster Okay, we'll take a pause here, so just for two minutes. So any question? Now, say for example, I have a class employee. So I have a class employee. And this class employee is having two fields, public string employee name. EMP name. And I have another one public int EMP age. So I have two values. So now, how do I create uh, how do I create uh, a list of employees so I can create like this so list of employees and I can write like this employees is equal to new list of employees and then I can write I can actually declare like this and I can I can add like this employees dot add I can write like this new employee and I can write here EMP name is equal to Meghna and then EMP age is equal to 30 so I can write like this I can add employees like this all of you know this already so I just created uh, yeah so I created a list of employees this is a generic so when I move the mouse here I can see that this is a generic list so here you can see that it's a generic list now I created a gender generic list I added one employee to it I can add like this or I can add like this here itself I can put flower brackets here uh, uh, I can add like this so what I can do here I can add new employee and and I can write like flower brackets here I can write EMP name EMP age equal to 30 and then EMP name is equal to Meghna and then what I can do I can give comma a new employee and I can write here again EMP name EMP name is equal to Bharat and I can give some name EMP age is equal to 29 let me give one last uh, one last employee new employee and I'll give EMP name is equal to uh, Ravi and I can give some uh, EMP age as 28 so like this you can declare uh, you can actually uh, initialize with some values so I initialize this employee so this employees object is now having three employees now if I ask you a question how do I how can I print uh, the names of these employees so how can I print that all of you it's uh, now we'll have some question and answers so the first requirement first question so question one I want to print names of all employees yeah who wants to go ahead I want to print the names of employees so this is a collection this is a generic generic collection so how can I print the names of employees so anyone wants to go ahead You can write a for loop, or you can write a. Uh, yeah, I got an answer from Sandhya. Uh, 